that one bullshit PlayStation trophy. Now, the Lord of the Hyper Funk Zone trophy in Toe Jam and Earl back in the groove on PS4 is absolutely bullshit because it requires you to reach the end of the Hyper Funk Zone, which is the game's bonus stage that you get by finding and walking through one of the door portals that may appear in certain levels. Now, these bonus stages played out like the one in the Mega Drive sequel to Toe Jam and Earl, and it's basically an auto-scroller with you constantly moving towards the right, and the only control you have over your character is the ability to press the X button to curl up into a ball, which allows you to avoid obstacles on the track, as if you hit them it will slow you down, or worse, cause you to exit the stage completely. So in order to get the trophy, you need to reach the end of the bonus stage, and that requires you to complete all five stages of the Hyper Funk Zone by progressing all the way to the end in one full complete run. And to do this and get it all in one go, it will only actually take you about two to three minutes of actual gameplay to actually do a whole complete run. So what exactly makes this trophy bullshit? <sighs> Where to begin? Well, the first problem is how you get into the bonus stage, as you need to find one of those doors, either if they magically appear in the level or you activate one via a switch. So when you go through it, you'll just be like, oh shit, fuck, what am I doing? And you'll probably just end up dying straight away. Or you might get lucky and get through a little bit, maybe the first stage done. But as soon as you fail it, you're kicked out back to where you were, and that door's disappeared. So now you've got to try and find another one, and this may take you a couple of levels before you see the next one. Which is really annoying, as the Hyperfunk Zone is basically one big memorization task where you need to know exactly what is ahead of you on the stage's track that you are running along because the way it works is the track is quite wobbly so you go up and down and the camera's always following you so the angle of the camera means you can't always see what's actually on the track ahead of you in time so there might be like an exit portal or a wall and you only get like a split second to see that as it comes into view as it's like pretty much right on top of you so you're bound to fail the first time you go through this because you you won't be able to react quick enough that's for sure so you need to play it again and again and again and again and again so that you eventually do it off by heart and you know exactly what's coming up on each of the five stages so you know exactly when to press x to go into the ball at the right times to avoid the obstacles and you know when to um you know let go of it so that you're you're running along and you can pick up the clock and then you need to know when you need to hold it again so that you can avoid the obstacles because if you hit too many of them they will slow you down and you won't be fast enough to make it to the exit in time or worse still they'll just exit you completely and that therein is where the second problem lies the time limit within the hyperfunk zone so as soon as you enter each new stage in the Hyperfunk Zone, the clock in the top right corner of the screen will begin counting down, and you have very little time to progress along the stage's track in order to pick up one of the clocks that are scattered along it to give you more time. If you can grab these, you get more time and you get a bit longer in the zone to be able to get a bit further along the track until you get to the end of that stage, and you'll probably have to grab at least two to three per stage in order to make it through to the end of them so that means you'll have to avoid all the obstacles pick up the clocks when you need to and make sure you avoid the rest of the obstacles and go on the right sort of route through it's all very much a memory based game as i've said and you'll probably miss these clocks the first time through each stage as they can be placed in really tricky situations on the track usually in between a load of hazards so you naturally probably won't get them because you'll just only notice them as you fly past them in a ball so this will cause you to fail the zone and then exit it, which is where you'll realise the next problem. This is very much a memory game whereby you have a very long gap between finding the door and getting back to the stage to try it again. So by the time you've progressed in the game enough to find another door, you would have likely forgotten the route that you did in the Hyper Funk Zone and what happened in the bit where you messed up or before, causing you to then either fail worse than you did last time, fail at the same bit again because you forgot where it was, or get lucky, go past the bit, but trip up on another bullshit section of the zone that just catches you off guard because you just can't see where the fuck you're going and what is in front of you until it's too late. 
The tracks themselves also have branching paths to make learning the routes even harder, as some paths will lead you to a complete dead end where there is no clock and you just run out of time, or maybe it's a harder path with a load more obstacles on it that just makes the route harder than it needs to be. So. You're always pretty much doomed to fail each of the stage, five stages of the Hyperfall Zone several times before you can complete them. So it's it's really hard to just keep the route in your mind when you have to carry on playing through the levels for such a long time in order to find another door to go through to try it again. How the fuck are you supposed to win that? So a way I got around this long, tedious in between wait until you get to the hyperfunk zone again. When I found the door again, I immediately saved and continued the game, then paused and actually closed the game down outright, so I could go and back up my save onto a USB. I would then reload the game again and try it once more, and if I failed then, I would just close the game down, go back to the menu, copy my USB save back onto the PS4 and try it again and every time I failed I would just close the game and recopy that file over as this for me was the best way to learn the route as you pretty much almost immediately get to try it again and again right after each other even though there is a tedious deleting, copying the save over and then watching the game's title screen boot up each bloody time you fail it it's for me it was better than going through the game and playing a few more levels and eventually hoping you find a door that just worked better for me so i would definitely recommend you do that if you go for this trophy just back up the save as soon as you find a door to a usb and keep reloading that until you eventually learn the route the biggest bullshit moment comes in the fifth and final stage as you need to hit a green spring which will supposedly bounce you up to a higher path where there is a clock there for you as if you miss this you won't find any clocks on the lower path so you'll fail the zone here and this is a total dick move as all the other stages in this zone you could still avoid those green and orange springs and make it far enough provided you didn't hit anything you would always reach another clock in time yet at the very fucking end of the bonus stage the game pulls a bait and switch on you and it's just a total bullshit move that we didn't need to do here however that wasn't the worst of it as when I got to stage 5 repeatedly after 2 hours of trying loading my save over and over when playing on the random world, everything was going well up until this 5th stage, until I realised that I just could not get through it no matter what I did, no matter what fucking path I took, whether I hit the spring or whether I avoided the green spring and stayed on the lower path, I would just not have enough time to get to the end, I would always run out, if I took the higher path going up, I would always run out of time in the same place. So I went back through again, spending even more time making sure that I collected every single lightning bolt to give me a speed boost so I could keep my momentum. I would collect every single lightning bolt on all five stages, not getting hit once on all five, and that took me a fucking age to learn and get that nailed down. As I figured I was just doing something wrong at this point, maybe I was in the ball too much, maybe that was somehow slowing me down and I needed to be running on foot instead, maybe I would go faster with that. So I was just second guessing myself and saying that I must have done something wrong because I had success all the way up to stage 5 but for some reason I just couldn't get past this very starting bit of stage 5. What the fuck was going wrong here? So after a probably half an hour of trying this and getting the route nailed down again, I, I finally managed to do it and I got to stage 5 and I had a massive momentum going into it and I thought yes I've got it. I'll avoid all the obstacles at the start and then I'll hit that green spring because I've read online that you have to take this high route in this fifth stage otherwise you won't get a clock. So I fly up there and I'm running along and what happens? I run out of time in the exact same fucking place as before so I didn't even need to get those fucking lightning bolts so I just wasted three fucking hours trying to get that for fuck's sake. Oh my god. And you know why I failed this? I failed this not because of my lack of skill or because I was doing something wrong or I was going the wrong route or I didn't collect all the lightning bolts or whatever. No, I failed this because the random world zone fucking glitched and wouldn't spawn a fucking clock before or right after that green spring to give me enough time to go through the whole fucking thing and get to the fucking end.
So this meant that I had to complete my random world playthrough, forgetting about the hyperfunk zone, and then do another normal world playthrough to eventually find a door to the hyperfunk zone, and then learn a whole new route to stage 5 as the fucking thing changes each time you start a new game, so the tracks are different, which then cost me another two fucking hours to learn it, to only then hopefully, HOPEFULLY I would bloody see a green clock before the spring on stage 5, otherwise I've just wasted even more fucking time, and thankfully when I got to stage 5, I finally saw that sweet son of a bitch, and I grabbed that clock as quick as I could, and then with that out the way, I had enough time to complete the rest of the stage in a couple more attempts once I learned the route. And I finally did it, but what a fucking clusterfuck that was. A glitched zone that you had to spend ages through trial and error learning it bit by bit to get to the end, only to run the risk of that. All that fucking hard work being for nothing if the game forgets to put a bloody fucking clock down for you. Jesus Christ. But thankfully I did it, and here's my video of my successful run, as you can just see how much I had to learn. So, we dodge that, then we wait for the present, and then we hide because of the wall. We go up, and then once there's a hill down, we get another clock there. And we just hold that. There is another clock we can get here, which is there, but I'm just going to leave that one. And try and get this next one. Here, there we go. And we're okay, this level's done. Nothing can get us now. Number two, there's three exits to dodge at the start. One, two, three. Let go, get the clock, hide again. Stay like that. And then you'll eventually see another one. There, we get that. And then as we go down, let go there, hit a spring. That's it. And then we hold that. Keep going like that. And then let go there to get the clock. And then we just hold that, and eventually we'll see an easy clock. I think it's here. Yeah. And then we're good, I think, to the end. Okay, this is three now, so... One, two, three, and then hold that, and then... Oh, God, I always forget that. Hold that, and then wait for the another clock, wherever it is. Yeah, okay, that's three done, I think. I think I'm okay to just stay like this. We'll get out just in case. I think it would have still been alright. Okay, four. Hold it in because there's a shitload of things. Exit there, clock there. Hit the spring. Yes, okay. Okay, I don't really know now. There's the clock that we need. All oh, right, all oh, right, all oh, right. Okay, what now? What now? Where's the clock? Where's the clock? Where's the clock? Where's the clock? Me, me. It doesn't me. matter because I don't need the clock. Oh shit. There's the clock. There's the spring, motherfucker. Okay. Ignore that spring. There it was, baby. There it was. Me, me, me. <laughs> Booyah! <laughs> I knew it. I knew it was right there. I fucking knew it. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, baby, oh yeah. <laughs> Yes. So, as you can yes, see, baby. I was pretty chuffed to finally yes. get this trophy out of the way. It was uh, a huge relief to have finally done it without it fucking glitching on me. I mean, what a ball ache of a trophy to get the Hyperfunk Zone was. It was just such a shitty trial and error little game, and it really was annoying. Unless you use that save glitch to sort of replay it quicker, you're in for an even worse time. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is why the Lord of the Hyperfunk Zone trophy in Toe Manel, back in the groove, gets a bullshit trophy rating of bullshit 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 you said so bullshit oh shit shit shit, shit.